we all know that Solidity is quite a unique programming language. It was first proposed by Gavin Wood back in 2014, who was the co-founder of Ethereum at the time and who is now the founder of Polkadot. Now, one of the main purposes of Solidity was to provide a language in which developers could create smart contracts. Now, one of the many characteristics of Solidity currently is that it allows programmers to declare data types, but to also declare where they would like these data types to be saved. Now, these different data locations are very important for a smart contract developer. The four different data locations that we'll be discussing in this video are gonna be storage, memory, stack, as well as call data. Now, knowing where to save your data types is very important for the execution of your smart contract. And actually, not knowing where to store your data types can lead to security vulnerabilities. So by the end of this video, you should have a thorough grasp on what data types belong in what data locations. But before we get into all of it, if you can appreciate this content, please hit that like button as well as that subscribe button and hit that push notification bell so you can get all my content as soon as it comes out. All right, so let's jump right into it. All right, so as I stated previously, there are four different locations that the EVM allows us to store our variables. The first one is gonna be storage, the second one is gonna be memory, the third one is gonna be stack, and the last one is gonna be call data. Now, you may have seen these different data locations being declared within our smart contracts. But the thing is, some of these don't actually need to be called. For instance, you may have seen memory before, but you may have never seen stack being declared within our smart contract. Now, this doesn't mean that some variables don't have a location. At the end of the day, we know that every single declared variable is stored somewhere within these four data locations. So the location in which the data is stored differs according to the variable's type as well as the scope. So for example, the location of certain reference types such as arrays, mappings, or structs can be stored in different locations than value types such as unsigned integers, booleans, or enums. Now the scope of the data types also play a huge factor in determining where the data types are gonna be stored. All right, so let's talk about storage. Now anything that is saved into storage is written on the blockchain. So anything that is on the chain essentially stays there forever. Now, every contract has its own storage and these variables are persistent. You can modify their value, but their location is permanent on the blockchain. Global variables, or sometimes we call them state variables, always stay in storage and you cannot explicitly override that. So let's go over to Remix real quick and look at an example of how to save state variables into the storage. So let's start off with our contract and we're just gonna create a very simple contract called storage. Now from there, I'm gonna go ahead and make an array called state array and it's gonna have a length of two. Next, I'm going to make a function called storage example. I'm going to declare this function public views and returns an unsigned integer. And lastly, I'm going to return the first value of the state array. Now notice my state array is outside of my function. Therefore, it makes it a state variable. So let's go ahead and deploy this contract. And then from here, I'm going to execute my storage example function. And as you could see, it comes out with a value of one. All right, now let's switch over to my whiteboard and we'll take a look at memory. So variables that are stored in memory are declared within a function as opposed to stores that are recorded outside of a function. Now these variables that are declared within the function and that are saved to memory are temporary. They're only accessible inside of that function. 
So the EVM basically deletes their location after the function is executed. So you can't access these variables from anywhere other than inside of that function. Now variables declared as a function parameter are always stored with the memory data location. I like to think of storage as your computer's hard drive and memory as your computer's RAM. Now RAM and hard drives both store critical data. RAM, however, is used to store computer programs and data that you may need when you turn your computer on. However, RAM data is erased once the computer is switched off. Hard drive data has permanent storage and is used to store data that don't necessarily need to be accessed regularly such as your operating system files. So let's switch over to Remix now and look at an example of storing variables into memory. So this contract, I'm gonna go ahead and call it memory. And once again, it's just gonna be a very simple contract. I'm gonna declare a function called memory example with no arguments. I'm gonna declare this function public, pure, and returns unsigned integer. Now from here, I'm going to go ahead and make an array called unsigned integer. Notice how I am calling this array within my function. Not like the previous example where I made my array a state variable outside of the function. So I'm going to go ahead and declare memory because I want to store my variable within memory. And this array is going to be X is equal to new unsigned integer array one. Now this new keyword deploys and creates a contract instance. So next I'm gonna declare my first value within my array equal to 23. Then I'm gonna make another array y and I'm gonna store it into memory and I'm gonna equate it to x. And then from there, I'm going to declare my first value of my X array equal to 45. And lastly, I'm going to return my first value of my Y array. Now it's important to note that assignments to a memory variable from another memory variable, as I just showed you here, don't create a replica for reference types. They do, however, create a replacement copy for value types. So let's go ahead and deploy this contract. And I'm going to go ahead and execute my memory example function. And as you can see, the first value for my Y array is going to be equal to 45. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the stack data location. Now, every simple variable that you declare in a function that you do not save to memory is essentially saved to the stack. Now, stack is a memory location that is only available to functions within its lifetime, just as memory is. Stack is essentially just a cheaper alternative to memory. So when the function starts, this variable is accessible. And when the function terminates, the variable is no longer accessible. So no actions are required in declaring a stack variable. You just have to essentially declare a variable within a function and it will be saved to the stack. The only thing that you really have to look out for is if a function has too many stack variables. Now, the way that you know this is because Solidity is going to send you an error, essentially telling you to remove variables from the stack because it's overflowing. So let's look at a quick example. I'm going to create a contract called stack and this contract is going to have a function called stack example. I'm going to declare it public view and it's going to return my unsigned integer and I'm just going to declare an unsigned integer X and that is it. Notice how I am not declaring where to save it. All right, so lastly, let's talk about call data. Now, I looked online, and for some reason, there has been a lot of confusion with call data. But what's crazy is that it's pretty straightforward. So essentially, call data is just a temporary data location, just like memory or stack. It depends on the function's execution, just like memory or stack. The only variables that are allowed to be saved to call data 
are arguments of a function. So for instance, in the previous two examples that we looked at with memory and stack, notice how I declared these variables within the body of the function. Now call data cannot be used in those previous two examples. So let's go ahead and look at an example of how to save arguments of a function to call data. So I'm going to start off by creating a new contract called call data. And I'm just going to declare one function. I'm going to call this call data test. And it's going to have a string x. And this string is going to be saved to call data. Now, in order to use call data, a function must be declared external. I'm going to declare this function pure also. And it's returning string memory. So when using call data, you are not allowed to modify the variable that you are calling. So for instance, once we declare X and save it to call data, this variable is now known as a non modifiable variable. Now the reason that call data was implemented in later versions of solidity was because using call data for function inputs rather than memory essentially saves you on gas. So let's go ahead and deploy this contract. And call this function. And as you can see, it works fine. Now remember, it takes gas to store data in their respective locations. So which locations are the most expensive in storing data? Now storage is the most expensive data location that you can use. And the reason for that is because we're storing data on the blockchain. Storage should only be used to store dynamic data that needs to be updated. As a matter of fact, modifying storage is one of the most expensive operations that you could do on the Ethereum network. To be more efficient, you should try to minimize the number of times that you alter state variables. Next up comes memory. Memory should be used to store data that only needs to be read or modified without saving it to the blockchain. Third on the list of the most expensive data locations is going to be stack. Now, as I stated previously, stack is just a cheaper alternative to memory. And lastly, the cheapest data location is call data. But remember, call data can only be used for external functions and is only used as a special location for function inputs. Call data saves on gas when called by another function by avoiding making different copies. So I hope you got a clear understanding of the different data locations that Solidity has to offer us, as well as the different data types that we are allowed to store within these data locations. So with that being said, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, as well as that push notification bell so you get all my content. And also leave some constructive criticism or negative criticism within the comment section. I want to know how I'm doing on these videos, and I want to know if you know any extra information about data locations. I'll catch you in the next video.